trying to build symmetry in your body, listen to this. Our next caller is Austin from Utah. What's up, Austin? How can we help you? Hey, uh, first off, I've been listening to your podcast for just a few months. I probably listen to an episode a day. I, I love you guys. I'm grateful for all the information you give. And Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, about three years ago, I snapped my leg in half in a side-by-side accident. Uh, it was a tib-fib compound fracture. And the first surgery actually yielded little to no bone growth. Um, so I went in for a second surgery, meaning that I was basically sedentary on my right leg for almost a year. Uh, I recently got back into lifting heavy again about a year ago, and I just got my body composition tested with an in-body scanner. I don't know how super accurate that is, but it said that my right leg, the one that I broke actually has four pounds more muscle than my left leg. Um, And I'm kind of wondering if this is something that's just like overcompensation initially from the, the surgery or if it's something that I need to worry about and train specifically to fix. Okay. No, that's a good, that's a good question. That's kind of weird. The Um, broken one has more muscle. That's that's according to in-body scan. Yeah. Let me ask you a couple more questions. How is your circulation in the leg that was broken? Does it feel, you got good circulation? Is there any swelling, anything like that? Uh, no, it feels, it feels pretty much normal. Um, the only thing that's different is I think it's my fibula, the one, the bone at the back it never actually connected. Oh, okay. So, like, okay. the doctor says it's not a big problem, and I don't feel it, but, mm. you know. Okay. Now, now, the okay, so when we're talking about the difference in muscle, he's saying right now, and he it's the one that was broken three years ago. The one that's, that's, that was broken has four has pounds more muscle. more muscle. So that's not uncommon at all. Yes. So what's actually very common is what happens is when we rehab, uh, and this has happened, this, they've, they've actually done studies to show this, like a lot of times what ends up happening is people end up, because they're so focused on rehabbing, they've never been that connected to that limb before, and they end up building more muscle on that. Well, so, so here's It the, comes back sometimes stronger. Yeah, I mean. but I need more, we, we need more info, Austin, because- I wouldn't rely entirely on an in-body yeah. scan. Are you stronger? Okay. On, does exactly. That, Are you more stable now? Like, what's the difference between y- both sides that you know as personally? Yeah, is, is the right leg stronger than the left leg? Does it feel more stable? Does it feel more explosive? Uh, y- yes. I, I think I can genuine, generally feel a little bit stronger in my right leg. Um, it's, it's not a big difference, and it is my dominant leg, so okay. I, I don't know. That's also... Okay. I'll well, okay. So nonetheless, uh, regardless of which leg was more muscular or stronger, I would put you, I would have you do unilateral training almost entirely yeah, all, all day. Yeah. For, for like a year. And what I would have you do is start your workout or your exercise with the weaker leg. So yeah. don't worry about right leg, left leg, whichever leg is weaker, start okay. your set with that leg and then match that rep range and that weight with the stronger leg. So in other words, you may be doing less then you know, then optimal for the stronger leg because you're trying to get the weaker leg to catch up, yeah. and that'll take that'll happen very quickly. And then I would stick to unilateral training for a while, six months, maybe a year, and then reintroduce okay. uh, yeah. bilateral. Otherwise, exercises. you're going to be running into asymmetry, and there's going to be you yeah. know like uh, things, uh, compensations, and things that you're going to have to account for down the road up the kinetic chain. So it's just better to really focus on that now while you have the opportunity. Uh, to to really bring them both up to speed. Yeah, so, so here's some good exercises, okay? You could do uh, single leg step-ups. You could do lunges, although lunges are still kind of bilateral. They're, they're split stance, so it's more, it's kind of got that unilateral sense. You could do Bulgarian split stance squats and then uh, driving the sled. I If I were you, I would do some sled driving most days. So regardless if you're working upper body or different, different body parts, a couple sets, two or three sets, of driving a sled across some grass or across some pavement because it's really, really good for function. It'll help balance out your body, and, and you should be able to notice a difference. But all okay. the training I would do if I were you would be unilateral at this point. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. I might uh, add a stability component to like uh, my hips and stuff, so mm-hmm. I like single leg toe touch uh, yeah, added mm-hmm. to that, um, and then maybe single leg leg press. Um, but I, the only, what I do want to tell you is that I, it's actually not as uncommon as you, you think may think, um, this okay. happened to me. So when I tore my, was it because you weren't training both legs and then you rehab well, one? So what hyper focused on that? No, is yeah. what that's. So my dominant leg used to always be my right leg. Mm. I, I tore my ACL and M cell in my, in my left knee. 
But when I rehabbed, I was so focused on rehabbing that left side that it actually, so, and before that I was a lot of, I was doing a lot of, you know, bilateral stuff. I wasn't doing yeah. a lot of unilateral stuff. But when I was rehabbing, I was doing a lot of unilateral stuff. I had to really focus on that right. one side. So what I attributed it to was in the past when I would squat or do leg press or these exercises for my legs, my dominant leg would carry most mm -hmm. of the load. But then when I had to rehab, I was doing a lot of unilateral stuff. I had to focus on rehabbing that leg, got really good and connected to it. And then when I went back to doing bilateral stuff, that leg was now becoming my dominant, dominant leg. Yeah, and I just sense. had never put enough emphasis on on the weaker side uh, of, of unilateral trading. And so now that my, my surgery side is my dominant, stronger side, it's really interesting that that happened. But I, I remember during that time trying to piece it together myself. And I, I remember reading articles around put this being common because someone gets hurt and especially athletes because and, and you're I, so focused yes because yeah. you're so focused on rehabbing that yeah, it's sense. that that single leg it never got that single leg attempt i was doing balancing stuff or you know to the very beginning you're doing a lot of stability balance a lot of con mind muscle connection stuff to that that injury side and i just had never given that attention to the weaker leg before and then that carried over into my training when i got back yeah. so one other thing austin I, I'm, I'm not a doctor but if but you said your fibia never fully connected uh yeah okay i would i would get another opinion i, I it just doesn't that doesn't okay. sound right to me that that's okay now maybe it's being communicated wrong or maybe i obviously i don't know the whole picture again i'm not a doctor but if i had okay. a bone that didn't reconnect uh, I would. I'd be a little concerned. Yeah, I'd want to go get another okay. opinion and say, okay, what's the deal here? Because I've had clients with a torn ACL, and the doctor's like, eh, it's no big deal because you don't play sports, you don't really need an ACL. I'm like, uh, not, <laughs> I don't think that's optimal. Yeah. Let's get that real okay. So yeah, I would get a second opinion just to see what's going on. And um, do you have uh, Maps Prime Pro? Because I think that'll really benefit you. I don't. All right, we'll send that over to you, Austin. Oh, thank you so much. No I problem. appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what you're saying makes sense because uh, it's like you you put hyper focus on rehab and you're not doing anything for the strong leg because mm -hmm. you're not you're thinking mm -hmm. oh it's okay, right. and then you surpass whatever yeah. before. But you know with unilateral training, it's really remarkable how quickly you start to balance things out and get stronger. Within a few months, you start to really get good. I remember um, watching Paul Check. So he's a good friend of ours, right? He's a wellness guru. And he's an older gentleman. He's got to be almost 60 now. Very strong, very muscular. This guy's a, a, he's a phenom. And I remember watching him do walking lunges. Mm -hmm. And Paul loves unilateral exercises. He does tons of unilateral exercises for his lower body. This guy was doing, and you're talking about a body weight of 160 pounds, 170, lean, right? Walking lunges with 275, which is insane. Yeah. Because he got good at them because he always did unilateral training. So you can get really, really strong with unilateral training and really develop good symmetry and balance. Well, in the there's body. there's a lot of coaches actually. There's camps here uh, that um, it's Mike Boyle who's famous for this, mm -hmm. right? Who's like who doesn't do anything bilateral. Everything is unilateral because we walk and run. When you think about it, yeah. walking and running is unilateral. It's not bilateral. So if if we walk and run like that, why wouldn't we train our bodies that way? So they make a good case for it. Yeah. Um, I, there's value in both. There is. I, I can I'm, definitely see more value in unilateral training for athletes for sure, though. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I see there's a lot of value. But general strength and power, especially if I'm training a newer athlete, um, I know we're kind of going off on, on a tangent, but I think this is a great topic. If I'm training a younger athlete and I'm trying to build general strength, then I'll do more maybe bilateral stuff unless there's some imbalances. As they get more advanced, then I think it makes more sense to go more specific unilateral type stuff, you know, because there's more carryover in that. You got to build case. that foundational base. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the unilateral really makes sense from there for them to be able to stabilize properly and generate force in a split stance position. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.